Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. It's the 3rd of July, it's 10 degrees so it's obviously cold, peeing down with rain and it's miserable and it's due to stay like that all week. Now I was going to go to the seaside and create some more seascape vlogs this week but clearly that's not going to be the case. There's only one thing to do at times like this, get yourself to a good woodlands. Before we get going, just one thing I wanted to say. I don't want this to be a how-to guide as such or a tips video. I've done enough of them just recently. But there is a couple of things I want to share with you. One, I'm not going to take too many photographs today for a very good reason because this is all about looking for compositions. So I'm going to talk you through how I look for compositions in woodland photography and I'm going to let you guys pretty much see what I see therefore if I explain it right in theory you guys over my shoulder should be shouting out there's one there Gary there's one there and there's another one there good if that is the case and if you see a belter then leave a comment down below and just put a timestamp on when you saw that image I think that makes sense but look, before we get going, let me just let me just say this now. Um, more often than not, finding compositions in woodland is probably a lot easier than you think. Yes, it's chaotic, we know that. It's about finding order in the chaos. Yes, we know that. But more often than not, people will probably go to the same old woodlands that they've been to time after time after time, and it it's probably likely that it's a boring woodland or a characterless woodland. Now, if you imagine how that would translate to landscape photography, then it's exactly the same. If you go to a boring landscape, you're gonna to struggle to take a good landscape picture. So therefore, I suppose it's, okay, it is a tip. I didn't want it to be a tips video, but without stating the obvious, go and find a more characterful uh, woodland like where I'm currently stood now if I do a 360 with this camera which I will do in a second then you'll see for yourself the amount of character and then throughout the video I'll point out compositions or likely compositions compositions that I think I could probably do something with and another thing before we get going as well sorry for this long segue but don't try and take a killer picture every time. Not every picture you take, again, just the same as landscape photography, not every picture you take will be an award winner. It's about getting out, exploring, having some fun, getting your camera to your eye, getting your camera on your tripod, and working compositions. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. Irrespective of your skill set, that's just a fact. Get your camera out, wander around grab some pictures some will work and some won't right just from where i'm stood now i'm going to turn this camera around and i'm just going to very quickly just from this very point where i'm stood right now i'm going to turn my camera around and let you guys see what i could see and i'll probably talk you through some likely compositions just while i'm stood here on this very very spot so remember, just keep an eye out and if there's anything you think has potential that I've missed, then let me know. And if I get any water on the lens, then I apologize. Now, straight in front of me here, for instance, um, I think that's interesting. I mean, look at that clump of trees there. That is so, so interesting. So whether I shoot wide at something like that and try and frame it, with trees around it or look for something of foreground interest there's plenty there or the option of course to zoom in tight if you look at the ziggly zaggly tree there or the fork like or y-shaped tree then maybe with a 70 to 200 mil lens looking right down its throat that could possibly make for a very nice image as well spin round spin round spin round spin round 
Okay, you can see again, look at the interest. And if I zoom in, there's an interesting tree. So this is just how I would go about looking for compositions. Like I say, some will work, some won't work. Path is an interesting path, a nice zigzag of a path. Let's come up here behind me. And again, look at everything that's around, everything. Look at that dead tree. I mean, just there, for instance, look at that. That's an interesting shot. So now you've got lots of things of value in that image. Foreground interest with that dead tree here. You've got framing on the left hand side, possibly framing, possibly framing on the right hand side. I could of course either move further left to avoid that or move further forward to avoid that. Or I could come back and include it more because it actually slopes quite nice into the frame from right to left. And then of course you've got this area up here that draws the viewer's eye through the frame. And that's very interesting. If we just zoom up there, what's up there? Don't know, but there's lots and lots and lots of character. Lots of character. And let's carry on with this 360. There's a dead tree there. There's lots and lots going on behind those trees. Right way around. So already, already, if I had to choose a composition, I've probably got about two or three to choose from in this very this one location but this here this is really quite nice so I'm just going to take some snapshots with my vlogging camera just to give you some kind of an idea of what I would use as a composition I mean, look at everything behind me here. It's got everything. The lighting is good, slightly misty in the background. We've got some foxgloves, those lovely purple flowers just there that could make or potentially make a nice a foreground interest. The light falling onto these trees is delectable. So the chances are there's gonna be a very good composition or compositions to be had just from this very, very location. I mean, that's just awesome. Look at that. Listen to that noise. That's a deer behind me. I didn't realize it'd make that noise. It's barking like a dog. You've got to admit, it's worth coming out here just for that. That's just fantastic. Fantastic. Right. Cool. Right, let's go back to what I was saying. So just from where I'm stood now, 
the potential for woodland photography is immense. I suppose really the aim of this video is not to take lots and lots of nice pictures to show you, hey guys, look how good I am. Far from it. This video really is, is about trying to get you guys to understand that if you go to a, a local hill or a mound and try and take landscape photography, you'll always struggle. If you go to Glencoe or if you go to, to the Isle of Skye, for instance, then it's a different ball game. You're going to be hard pushed to come away with a bad picture from those locations. Well, the same, well, the same must be said for woodlands as well. Go to a really, really nice woodland like this. I mean, this has everything in abundance. So irrespective of your skill set, you're going to come here and guaranteed to go away with a picture or two and you only need one or two pictures no more than that just one or two pictures that's all you need and the reason why I say that is because if I spent all day today and took 20 or 30 images possibly more but one or two of them were outstanding images to add, add to my portfolio then that's not a bad day's work it really isn't um, because if I do the same thing again next week or in two weeks time and then the same again in another two weeks time six months from now i'm gonna have a pretty sizable portfolio that's it really it's not brain surgery now i know i said i wasn't going to take any pictures on this vlog but when i was working that composition with my vlogging camera showing you guys just the potential it had i just thought there's no way that i could walk away from here without taking one or two pictures This damn bird is still flying around here. I'll grab a shot to prove it to you. I'm not sure if you can hear it. I'm not sure if this microphone is managing to pick up the sound of that bird flying. Ah, oh, there he is. Time to grab the shot. Before I talk you through my setup, let me just very quickly explain my workflow when it comes to taking pictures, because I'm really bad, if you can call it bad, of course. But what I tend to do is, I've seen a potential for a shot, I like it, so I've now fine-tuned it, but I fine-tuned it where I am here, because I know potentially this would make for a very nice shot. Possibly portrait, possibly landscape orientation. But is it the best composition for those trees in the background well i'm not really sure so i have two choices now one is to keep the camera in the bag and wander around and extensively search out 
the best composition, which I probably recommend doing. But for me, when I see something I like, camera bag down, camera out, on the tripod, set up, and I grab the shot. I fine tune it from here, then I grab the shot. After I've grabbed the shot, I then start working the composition. Now, I'm not suggesting for one second that you work like me, but I would feel cheated somehow if I just came away with one picture of this tree. I want to come away with what I consider to be a good picture and a better picture and perhaps a better still picture. In other words, I want to grab the shot and I want to grab another shot and then I want to grab even more. And that's just how I work. It's almost like it's an addiction. I can't, I couldn't possibly walk away from here and then start wandering around. I, I'll possibly end up with a better shot than, than where I currently am. But I've seen potential, it's nice. I fine tuned it from this area here. I'll talk you through my setup in a second. And now I'm gonna grab the shot. Let me talk you through my setup. I'm looking straight down the barrel. On the right hand side, there's a set of trees all pointing down or all leading the viewer's eye in towards the point of interest in the background, which is those two trees. I quite like this. I'm gonna grab this shot in portrait orientation and in landscape orientation. I've got the long lens on as well, so I'm gonna zoom right in. I might opt for a shallow depth of field. I might open that aperture right up to maybe f5.6. Therefore, it'll render the trees closest to us slightly out of focus. They're a fair distance away from us, so they won't be too bad, but they will be out of focus. But of course, that will then help to draw the viewer's eye in towards the two trees, uh, which are currently forming a point of interest. I love this. Really, really, really cool. Let's just fine tune this ever so slightly. Just come down just to make sure I can grab both sets of trees in there. The light has changed ever so slightly, but it's still like that. Yeah. Foreground interest, background interest. Let's focus. Let's open that aperture to 5.6. ISO 200. It's really, really dark here. But let's go at ISO 200 and let's increase the shutter speed to bring the light down let's pop up my histogram my histogram is looking good at that and that's only a tenth of a second and i'll probably end up making an image darker in post-production um not sure if it works in portrait orientation maybe a four by five crop will look good at that Let's grab that shot one two that's one in the bag that's quite nice i quite like that and now flip the camera over and go landscape orientation and let's have a look now again i quite like that it's really dark these two trees here are really really dark now the only thing that might look a bit odd here is when i get my balance right it's sloping down from the left to the right hand side. So it might look a little bit odd. Let's again, zoom in, zoom out. Mm. I might go slightly higher to get a bit more of that canopy in. Same settings, focus on the trees and one, two, and grab that shot. Simple as that. Nothing any more complicated than that. I would probably have put a polarizer on at the front, but it's still raining. And so I'm just gonna leave my hood on there because that's just gonna help keep the rain off the front of the lens.
Oh, my work here is done. It's been a really, really, really good morning. A really good morning. My intention was to take any pictures, but like I said, I, I did take quite a few pictures. And um, I even managed to get the drone out. Adam Gibbs, eat your heart out. Don't worry, Adam. That's your technique. I won't be using that every week. I just thought I'd give it a go just to see how difficult it is. It really is difficult, by the way. So, let's conclude by saying woodland photography is really, really easy. It's no more difficult than landscape photography. It isn't a dark art. It isn't something that you're born good at or you're rubbish at for life. That's not the case at all. If ever you've gone out with your camera and taken a nice landscape picture, then there's absolutely no reason why you can't go out with your camera and take a nice picture in the woodlands because they're exactly the same. So next time you go to your local woodlands, <coughs> excuse me, if they're boring and you come away with boring pictures, then just go to a more exciting woodland. It's not rocket science. If you see other photographers work that are mind blowing, it's not mind blowing because they're better photographers than you. It's because they've either been doing it for longer or they've been going to more exciting locations and they've probably out there more than you are that's the only reason or well, that's probably the only reason why their portfolio is better than yours that's it there's the word conclusion it really isn't a dark art get out there treat it like landscape photography and just try and find woodlands that's exciting this is what I do just about every week. If you've enjoyed this content, do me a favor, subscribe, hit that notification bell and give me a thumbs up. Blah-de-blah-de-blah. -blah -blah. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.